Hello from Austin. We're here in Texas, and in a few minutes, we'll be bringing you the Moto3 race. The weather is fine, and the temperature is perfect for racing. So we're just waiting to find out which riders have opted for hard tyres and which have gone for the soft. So, Moto3 for this weekend, we did manage to qualify fifth, uh, and we were actually fastest this morning in the morning warm-up, so it's actually looking not too bad going into round three. Now, once again, as per usual, I like to sort of get this bit out of the way quick, but uh, for those that are tuning in for the first time, or have not seen any of my previous MotoGP videos on my channel, I do use a full 2018 modification to the game. So this is a 2018 mod on the uh, PC. I'm not playing on the PlayStation or Xbox. This is on the PC. I might just put that out there so you can't actually get this mod on the PlayStation. But and basically everything looks and feels like it is in the new year of MotoGP. All right. So that's about all we've got uh, to talk about before going into this race. Nothing really much has changed. We had a pretty decent run in round two uh, at the circuit. Termas de Rio Hondo in Argentina where we managed to snag third on the last lap again we did the exact same thing in Qatar so we've had two almost identical races in the first two rounds of the season but I feel like we got a little bit more pace here than what we did have in Argentina and Qatar so hopefully we can get through the first corner and through the first couple of laps unscathed and well come away with what will hopefully be a first win of the year. So as you can see, Lopez on pole, Canet second, Gulliger third. We are on the second row. Uh, we're in the middle of second of the second row, so right if we can get a good start, should be okay. the Grand Prix of the Americas, mere seconds remaining now, and the riders know that here, the way they tackle that first corner is going to prove crucial. Alrighty, here we go. Round three in Moto3. Let's get this thing off to a good start. Easy get away, we'll try to cover the inside. Wow, went deep, very deep. Oh no! Fucking hell, low sided. Ah! It's not where we wanted to start. Just felt like I was going to be cut off, so I panicked and grabbed the front brake too much. Time to charge back through the field. Sad. Oh. Squeeze. God, this is tight. Oh. Three wide. We've got Darren Binder. The Red Bull KTM. Alright, long draft down this long straight. The straight just goes on and on and on and on forever. Inside of one of the Leopard bikes. Wrap around the outside of some of these guys. Oh, no. There's one on the inside. Oh, elbows out. Big move. Come on, drive you good thing. Ooh, 
Damn. Alright, so we've made some places back. We've actually gained 10 places since we fell down on that first lap, so plenty of time left to try and get back through the pack. So hard to get. Oh, Jesus Christ! Wow, they slow down a lot. <laughs> That's one of the hardest section of corners in world motorsport. Even though there's plenty of runoff, you can make or break a lap there. It's just, it's continuing, continuously tightens up, so you end up getting stuck, trying to slow down, but at the same time hold all the momentum from that sort of first section of it. And on a bike, on MotoGP 17, when using a controller, it's so hard to get the bike to lean over, then lean over again, then lean over again. <laughs> Understeer there, come on, get that draft. We are on Rossi's VR46 Sky Racing Team thingamajig. <laughs> so we do have a good bike. No excuses why we shouldn't be able to get back up through the field. Focus on the exit. God, it's very tight in this mid pack. Over and under. Got it done. Oh, Jesus crap. That's why you always look forward when you're midway through a corner. <laughs> So we have got the difficulty set to simulation, which is the hardest difficulty you can set on MotoGP 17. So it's definitely not easy, but I do believe we've got good pace. Come on, go, there we go. Oop, where am I going? I'm trying to get in the draft. They all ran wide. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Bike there, mate. Cut him off. Yeah, have some of that. A little bit behind on that section then. At least now we've got some clear space. We can try and pull us to the front. Alright, so we're inside the top 10, and that is the lead just up the road. So we've just got to try and latch onto the back of these guys and get in the draft. Now one thing I probably should have mentioned before, this is a 9 lap race, so it's approximately half of what the real life race is. Got plenty of time to come back through the field. Got pace, that's for sure. I am using a lot of the tyre though, so I won't be able to hold this pace much longer. Sneak up the inside. Nope. Come on, there we go. Draft. God, this turn one is... Ah! That's a very large curve to go over the top of on one of these bikes. Ah, 
Uh, nailed it then. Missed the first apex, but besides that, it was pretty good. And we are going to the front. Alright, so we're just about halfway to the finish. Side. I think that's Kenat. Yeah. So we pass Kenat into seventh position now. Kenat. Still getting used to some of these riders' names in Moto3. It's been a while since I've really followed Moto3 week in, week out. Oh, big dive bomb. Mate, you're going for a ride. Oh, wow, he pulled it up. Ah, go away. Go away. We are going to the front. You're going to the back. I still can't believe they allowed Aaron Canet to be let off after what he did in the practice session at Argentina. That was pretty crazy. Alright, three wide under our teammate. Oh, pull it up, pull it up. Nice. Oh, we had to hold it on the exit. Don't do it. Oh, what the fuck? Wow. Got shunted by our teammate. Alright, fair enough. Around the outside for the lads. Oh, had some of that. Ah! Dude, go away! Supposed to be working together. <laughs> Valentino would not be happy. Alright, big draft down this straight. Whoa. It's a bit of an interesting way to go about it. Oh, it's foggier, that's right. Foggier. Still not quite sure how to pronounce his name. Oh, big dive bomb. Over and under. Come on guys, we're losing time. Mind you, it looks like they're having a pretty decent battle up the front as well. Oh, what a move. Got both of them. Alright, now let's get away. Well, I did not think we'd be able to get it back through the field that quickly. I mean, usually I have quite a lot of trouble passing in Moto3 because everyone's so even. But, no, we've done well. Now it's just... Oh, that's a big move. And that guy has no tyre left. Alright, one step away from the podium. Ah, God, if there was an apex back there, I was never going to hit it. Oh, Lopez went for the big dive bomb. I think Lo Lopez actually put it on the pole, I believe. I can't quite remember. Around the outside of third. Boom! 
Book it. One of our teammates, I do believe that is Bulaga. Yep. So it's Bulaga versus Ertel out the front. And then we've got Jorge Martin behind us who is going for the move. Big move from Martin. Set them both up. Hopefully, we can get both in. Come on, now break. Nice. All right. I can see the lead. I can smell the lead. We have way more pace than these guys. We have the lead, all right. Let's try and build a gap. Uh, AstroTurf. AstroTurf and bikes do not mix. I must admit, MotoGP um, 17 have done an awesome job of, I think it's actually Milestone who create these games. I can never quite figure it out, but they've done an awesome job of making this sort of representation of Oh wow, big move. Yeah, dream on. Representing this sort of recreation of the circuit in the American circuit. I've actually been here in real life and it is pretty damn close considering it's not laser scanned or anything. Ah, come on. God, this section. I'm fine when I'm behind people through there because I can sort of reference off them but when I'm by myself it's just, I don't know, cannot get that section right. Alright, we have a small gap to second. We've got just under three laps to go. And Philip Ertel is just hanging on. He does have the draft, so he may make a big move here. Not if I go and outbreak myself by half a mile. Oh, well, sorry. Alright, come on, Joseph. Focus. Look forward. Gosh, I'm starting to lose that tyre now. I had to use so much of the tyres to get through the field that I'm starting to lose it now that I'm in the lead. It's alright, we've got a gap, we just really need those sort of four behind us to start fighting, which it looks like they are. Starting to lose that front tire a bit. I've been really asking a lot of it going into some of these corners, unlike some of the other tracks. There's just some really heavy braking zones around here. The brakes really do take a pounding. Alright, 
one and a half laps to go. Let's see if we can just stay on the bike. <laughs> just stay on the bike. <laughs> Please. <laughs> In the great words of Brad Pitt, stay on the bike. tire left at all. Hard on the traction control through there. You have to be really careful on the Moto2 and MotoGP bike. Or bikes. So I'm friggin' struggling with wheel spin here on the on the bloody Moto3 bike and I've never had that all season so this track is particularly hard on the tires. I might have to go to that hard option rear tire for both. Right, last lap, build up enough of a gap to not worry about having to defend or anything, not that you really can defend on Moto GP or Moto 3 bikes, <laughs> I mean you can, but these guys will always find a gap, it's not like a race car where you take up, you know, a third of the track. Don't do that again, Joseph. Okay. Yep, no. That ripple strip was uh, nice and gentle. Beautiful. Got this track down well now. Oh, not that section. I have no rear tire, uh, front tire through there anymore. All right, last corner. First win of the season. Come on. I haven't won in any of the categories yet. This will be our first win full stop on MotoGP 17. Woohoo! Yes! Oh my god, finally! It only took like seven races to finally get a win on MotoGP 17. Wow. Finally, 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 finally. Alright, we managed to take the win. Jorge Martin in second. Nicola Bugler. 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 I can't, still can't even say his name right. Nicolo Bugler, I believe is how you pronounce it. Pronounce it. God. English is not my strong subject today. Anyway, he managed to grab third. Philip Bertel actually didn't even finish on the podium in the end. But, three second win after coming all the way from the back. We're going to have a quick look as to what happened on the first corner. I think I just, I grabbed too much of the front brake. I don't think I made contact with anyone. Got off to a decent start. Slight wheelie there. But, it's really good to see three of the sky bikes on the front two rows. So I let them all go by and then, oh, I got a bit of a shunt. Yeah, and I was worried about hitting my teammates. So I sort of panicked and grabbed that front brake, but... Thankfully, unlike in real life, you don't have to go sprinting back to your bike and then having to hop on it and hop up and down 40 times to get it re to re-fire. So we got back on and went. And, well, basically that's all there is to it. Just picked them off one by one. Got pretty aggressive here on the first lap. But, you know, that was a really, really fun race. By far the best race I've had on MotoGP 17 
in any of the categories, let alone just Moto 3. Oh, elbow's out. <laughs> you know, that was really fun. Alrighty, guys, well, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Yes, there it is. First win of the year. First win on MotoGP 17. What a race. What a race. Anyway, guys, stay tuned as we're just about to go and run Moto2, where hopefully we can have some similar pace. We've been struggling, struggling with the Calyx bike so far this year, so hopefully we can go and get a decent result on that one as well. Alright guys, until next time, I'll catch you later.